the Halo car. A vehicle that showcases the performance and technological prowess of the manufacturer is known as the Halo car, and for Ford, it's the GT. The Ford GT is an homage to the Le Mans winning GT40 race cars that battled Ferrari's prototypes and won four consecutive years from 1966 to 1969, and more specifically, a modern design take on the original Mark I GT40 that won in 68 and 69. The GT's rush development meant Ford had to utilize prior technologies found in the SVT Terminator and Lightning, but could still meet the extreme demands of road racing and long-term sustained stress at high speed. The overbuilt nature of the Ford GT's drivetrain and very low aerodynamic drag would become the test bed for some of the fastest street legal cars on the planet. Today on Explain, we will take a deep dive into Ford's most overbuilt road car. We've all heard of the Ford vs Ferrari story, the GT40s that battled Enzo Ferrari's prototypes at Le Mans and won first, second and third place in 1966 and three more consecutive first place wins in the years after. What happened after is just as integral to how the Ford GT of 2005 to 2006 came about. Many concepts based on the GT40 were never put into production because at the end of the day, they actually had to sell them. Take the 1995 Ford GT90. This concept was inspired by the F-117 Stealth Fighter and would usher in a new edge design language for Ford. The GT90 was built on the Jaguar XJ220 aluminum chassis since Ford owned Jaguar at the time, and a new bespoke V12 engine built from two 4.6 liter modular V8s that were built by Roush. The engine was destroked from 3.5 inches to 3 inches to give it 5.9 liters of overall displacement and to reach 200 mile per hour top speeds, it was paired with four TO2 Garrett turbochargers at 8 PSI of boost giving it an output of 720 horsepower. Made it to a 5 speed manual Ricardo transmission, it had a proposed top speed of 253 miles per hour which could be achieved by over boosting the engine to 900 horsepower but never was tested to verify the claim. The GT90 concept would never get the green light, purely for how controversial the styling was, which put Ford back to the drawing board. The breakthrough came with Project Petunia, a very unassuming project name for such big shoes to fill. Ford chief designer Jay Mays, along with Camilo Pardo, would crack the code in design by not trying to revolutionize the GT40, but rather going retro and keeping it true to the original design and proportions. Carroll Shelby and John Coletti would spearhead the drivetrain, and even with initial talks of a V10 to rival the Dodge Viper, time constraints would force them to utilize a heavily modified version of the existing 5.4 liter modular V8 architecture. The goal was 500 horsepower and 500 torque and to achieve it, they would implement forced induction similar to the Terminator Cobra and SVT Lightning. The Ford GT engine was designed with computer-aided engineering and the use of finite element analysis. This way they could simulate the stresses of engine components and optimize them without needing to have physical prototypes and would shorten the development process immensely. T6 aluminum was selected as the block material for its superior fatigue and strength properties but also weight savings over an iron block equivalent. The crankshaft was a twisted steel forging specifically machined for the GT. Molly forged aluminum pistons with anodized ring lands and anti-friction coatings. The connecting rods were forged H-beams made from 4340 steel and derived from the successful manly H-beams used in the Terminator Cobra. The cylinder heads were derived from the Cobra R. It was a dual overhead cam 32 valve design, but with a thicker exhaust port casting, which improved valve cooling. To reach the 500 horsepower development target, the engine was mated to an Eaton 2.3 liter air to water intercooled twin screw supercharger that pushed 12 pounds of boost and each intake port was fed with two 32 pound per hour injectors. The need for a low center of gravity engine placement and more lubrication flow since the piston oil squirters required 16 liters per minute forced the team to use a dry sump oiling lubrication system with an external high flow pump. The final output was 550 horsepower and 500 pound-feet of torque. And due to the GT40 design, it had a very low coefficient of drag, giving it a 205 mile per hour electronically limited top speed. 
Between 2004 and 2007, 4,038 GTs were produced worldwide, and once in the hand of customers, some thought the 550 horsepower power plant just wasn't enough. Companies like Hefner Performance would soon offer packages for the GT from simple pulley swaps and tunes to full-blown twin-turbo packages eclipsing the four-digit horsepower mark. <laughs> Since the 5.4 liter engine was so robust from the factory, so intensely engineered, it could withstand a thousand wheel horsepower on the factory internals when combined with twin turbochargers and C16 race fuel. Being very aerodynamically stable, having immense power potential, and sharing architecture with Ford's modular V8s, the GT would make the perfect recipe for top speed testing. Enter M2K Motorsports, Mark Heidecker and Kevin Kesterson, with the help of John Miovich, would develop a Ford GT that would cross the 3,000 horsepower mark and 300 mile per hour barrier in the famed Texas Mile event, making it the fastest street legal car on the planet. John Miovich developed the engine from his extensive experience with modular Ford engines in drag racing. The M2K Ford GT retained the factory engine block, which is a testament to the over-engineering done at Ford. It included CNC-ported cylinder heads and more aggressive camshaft. It featured a billet crankshaft with forged connecting rods and custom one-off JE pistons that raised compression to 13 to 1, which wasn't an issue since it only ran on race gas. The engine was paired with twin precision 8685 turbochargers, pushing over 50 pounds of boost pressure. Using a MoTeC engine control unit and analyzing the fuel demand, the power was estimated between 2,700 and 3,000 horsepower in a 4,000 pound configuration due to the safety equipment. In March of 2019 at the Texas Mile, this car would reach 299.2 miles per hour and then adding two more pounds of boost, it would touch 300. The Ford GT of 2005 to 2006 is undeniably one of the greats of the modern era. Even with its six-figure price tag, it boasted the classic blue oval on the hood to let the world know it was a Ford. Where the original GT40 dominated in Le Mans, the Ford GT dominated on the Texas Mile.